Hello, and welcome to Backstage. Welcome to the place where this entire production was directed from. Welcome to my kitchen. This room has served so many purposes in the last three months, especially for this production, that I felt it was the perfect place to address you and to continue the thank yous that our students had started in recognition to those individuals who have helped make this production possible. So, thank you to Mr. Dan Gennaro, our headmaster at Chesterton Academy of the Holy Family, who wrote this adaptation of Shakespeare's masterpiece, Hamlet. Thank you, Mr. Gennaro, also for advising our students in everything from line interpretation to acting and even choreographing some of our sword fighting scenes until we had to move them online. Thanks to Mr. Patrick Lyon, Latin teacher and literature teacher, for an enlightening and informative pre-production script analysis. We would also like to thank our support staff, Ms. Rachel Harado and Ms. Severance, for working tirelessly with the technical end and the marketing for this one-of-a-kind production. Our costumes were graciously supplied to us by Mrs. Janine Sullivan of Sullivan Costumes and mother to one of our senior actors, Mrs. Ann Calligan. A special thanks goes to Parents of another one of our senior actors, Mr. and Mrs. Ed and Mimi Giles, who helped deliver all of the costumes and props to the front porches of all of our seniors who live throughout the Chicagoland suburbs. And a special thank you must go to a pair of our co-founders, Mr. and Mrs. Bowles. Mrs. Julie Bowles is the Executive Director at Chesterton Academy of the Holy Family, and Mr. Brenny Bowles is on the Board of Directors. Thank you for your continued help and support with this show and the entire theater program. This has been a strange end of the year for the students in our senior class. Definitely not the ending that they expected and dreamed of, I'm sure, on their first day at school in the fall or our first day of production in the spring for this production. However, it will be a memorable one. I am so proud of each of our student actors. This has not been easy time for any of us, but these students have persevered through it all. From the initial stay-at-home order, to an extension, to the next, we have tried to stay realistically optimistic and hoped and prayed that this performance would be on stage. But it soon became evident that it was not to happen. However, at rehearsals, while they continued, I was enthralled with what I was seeing in the Zoom rooms. And I realized that if the COVID-19 crisis kept us separated, this production still could go on online. Every student in the senior class embraced the idea with a renewed spirit and took on the historic task with joy and determination. This was a unique production, but it was merely an example of the fine work produced by our unique drama program. At Chesterton Academy of the Holy Family, drama is not an elective. It is an integral part of the classical curriculum. From sophomore year on, Every student takes drama and learns every aspect of putting on a production by doing just that. While our school has been blessed with some naturally talented actors who have thrived with the experience of performing some of Western culture's greatest works, many of our students would never have voluntarily entered a drama group or class. Many of our students come to us with little or no theater or acting experience. And this is where I love to see such a student discover the beauty, excitement, and draw of acting and performing on stage. 
this program offers an opportunity for every student to see all that is good, true, and beautiful in this art. And it gives them all a new outlook and interest in theater that they may not have had before. We would like to thank you all for coming and tuning in and watching our play. And we hope that you enjoyed it as much as we have enjoyed putting it on for you. A special thank must go out to our donors and benefactors without whom none of this magic could take place. And I would like to encourage all of you to explore our school's website at C A T h f dot com where you can see photos of our past performances and if you are so moved can make a donation to our school to help ensure that our work can continue thank you again god bless you and good night What is this site? What is it you would see? Thought of woe or wonder. Cease your search. This quarry cries on havoc. O proud death, what feast is toward in thine eternal cell? That thou so many princes at a shot so bloodily hast struck. This site is dismal, and our affairs come too late. The ears are senseless that should give us hearing. To tell them their commandment is fulfilled, where should we have our thanks? Not from his mouth, had it the ability of life to thank you. He never gave commandment for their death. But since upon this bloody question you from our here arrived, Give order that these bodies high in the stage be placed to the view, and let me speak to the yet unknowing world how these things came about. So shall you hear carnal, bloody, the natural acts of accidental judgments, casual slaughters, of deaths put on by cunning and forced cause, and in the subshot, purposes mistook. Fallen in on the inventor's heads. All this can I truly deliver. Let us haste to hear it and call the noblest to the audience. For me, with sorrow, I embrace my fortune. Let four captains bear Hamlet like a soldier to the stage, for he was likely, had he been put on, to approve most royally. Take up the bodies. Such a sight as this becomes the field, but here shows much amiss. yourself. Long live the king! Bernardo? Yes. <laughs> you come most carefully upon your hour. Tis now struck twelve. Get thee to bed, Francisco. For this relief, much thanks. Tis bitter cold and I am sick at heart. Have you had a quiet guard? Not a mouse stirring. Well, good night. If you do meet Horatio and Marcellus, bid them make haste. I think I hear them. Stan! Who is there? Liegeman to the Dane. Oh, good night. Farewell, honest soldier. Hello, Bernardo. What is Horatio there? A piece of it. Welcome, Horatio. Welcome, good Marcellus. What, has this thing appeared again tonight? I have seen nothing. Horatio says tis but our fantasy, and will not let belief take hold of him. Therefore, I have entreated him along that if again this apparition come, he may approve our eyes and speak to it. Tush, tush, it will not appear. Sit down a while and let once again assail your ears that are so fortified against our story. Well, sit we down. 
Let us hear Bernardo speak of it. Last night of all, Marcellus and myself, the bell beating, then one. Peace, break thee off. Look where it comes again. In the same figure like the king that's dead. Thou art a scholar, speak to Horatio. What are you? I have not I charge thee, speak. Stay, speak. Speak, I charge thee, speak. It is offended. See, it stalks away. Tis gone and will not answer. How now, Horatio, you tremble and look pale. Is not this something more than fantasy? For my God, I might not disbelieve unless I saw it with my own eyes. Is it not like the dead king? As thou to thyself. Such was the very armor he wore. Tis strange. Thus twice before he has come by our watch. Moat it is to trouble the mountain's eye. In the most high and palmy state of Rome, a little ere the mightiest Julius fell, the grave stood tenantless, and the sheeted dead did squeak and gibber in the Roman streets. The stars with trains of fire and dews of blood, disasters in the sun. Thus hath heaven and earth together demonstrated unto our climature and countrymen the strange eruption to our state. Soft, behold, look where it comes again. Cross it, though it blast me. Stay, illusion. Thou hast any voice, speak to me. Tis here. Hey, speak. Stop it, Marcellus. Tis here. Tis here. Tis gone. I was about to speak. Break we up our watch. By my advice, let us see. Tell what we have seen tonight to young Hamlet. For upon my life, this ghost, dumb to us, will speak to him. Do you consent we tell him? Let's do it, I pray. I know where we shall find him. Though yet of Hamlet, our dear brother's death, the memory be green. It befits our kingdom to be contracted in one brow of woe. Yet so far has discretion fought with nature that our sometime sister, now our queen, the imperial jointress of this warlike state, have we, with mirth and funeral and with dirge and marriage, taken to wife. For all our thanks. Now follows that young Fortinbras, thinking, by our late dear brother's death, our state to be disjoint and out of frame, hath not failed to pester us with message and courting us with surrender of those lands lost by his father to our most valiant brother. So much for him. For ourself and for this time of meeting, we have here writ our fellow king, Norway, uncle to young Fortinbras, to suppress his overstepping. And we here dispatch you, Lady Voltamanda, as bearer of this greeting. Farewell, and let your haste commend your duty. In that and in all things, I will show my duty. We doubt it not. Heartily farewell. And now, Laertes, what's the news with you? You told us of some wish. What would you have, Laertes? Your permission to return Eng to England, once I came to Denmark, to show my duty to your coronation. Have you your mother's permission? What says Lady Polonia? He hath, my lord, my consent. I do beseech you, give him leave to go. Laertes, go as you will. And now, my cousin Hamlet, and my son. A little more than kin and less than kind. How is it that the clouds still hang on you? 
Not so, my lord. I am too much in the sun. Good Hamlet, cast thy nighted colour off, and let thine eye look like a friend on Denmark. Do not forever seek for thy noble father in the dust. Thou knowest tis common, all that lives must die, passing through nature to eternity. Ay, mother, tis common. If it be, why seems it so particular with thee? Seems, good mother, nay it is, I know not seems. It is sweet and commendable in your nature, Hamlet, to give these morning duties to your father. But, but you must know, your father lost a father, that father lost his father. But to preserve this unmanly grief, fie, tis a fault to heaven, a fault against the dead. We pray you, think of us as father, for let the world take note, you, you are the most immediate to our throne. For your intent in going back to school in Wittenberg, we beseech you, stay here, stay here as our son. Let not thy mother lose her prayers, Hamlet. I pray thee, go not to Wittenberg, stay with us. I shall in all my best obey thee, mother. Why, tis a fair and loving reply. Madame, come, come away. Oh, that this too, too solid flesh would melt. Thaw and resolve itself into a dew. For that the everlasting had not fixed his cannon against self-slaughter. Oh God, God, how weary, stale, flat, and unprofitable seem to me all the uses of this world. Fly on, ah, fly. Tis an unweeded garden that grows to see things rank and gross in nature possess it merely. That it should come to this, but two months dead. Nay, not so much, not two. So excellent a king that was to this high period to a satyr. So loving to my mother, that he might not beteem the winds of heaven, visit her face too roughly. Heaven and earth, must I remember why she would hang on him, as if increase of appetite had grown by what it fed on. And yet within a month, let me not think on't. Frailty, thy name is woman, a little month. Oh, ere those shoes were old, with which she followed my poor father's body. Like Naomi, all tears. Why, she, even she. Oh, God, the beast! The once discourse of reason would have mourned longer. Married with my uncle. My father's brother. But no more like my father than Ida Hercules. In a month, ere yet the salt of most unrighteous tears had left the flushing 
in her guarded eyes, she married. Almost wicked speed to post with such dexterity to incestuous feats. It is not, nor it cannot come to good. But break my heart, for I must hold my tongue. Hail to your lordship. I am glad to see you well. <laughs> Horatio and friends, <laughs> but what in faith is your affair in Elsinore? My lord, I came to see your father's funeral. I pray thee, do not mock me, fellow student. I think it was to see my mother's wedding. My lord, I think I saw your father yesterday night. Saw who? The king. Your father. The king. My father? For God's love, let me hear. For two nights, these gentlemen, Marcellus and Bernardo, on their figure, on, on, their, on their watch, saw a figure like your father. Thrice he walked by them. They stood dumb, too afraid to speak. This they told me, and I with them the third night kept watch, where, as they said, the apparition came. I knew your father. These hands are not more like. But where was this? My lord, upon the platform where we watch. Did you not speak to it? My lord, I did, but answer made it none. I will watch tonight, perhaps to walk again. I warrant it will. If it assumes my father's shape, I'll speak to it, though hell itself should gape. I pray you all. Tell no one. Fare you well. Upon the platform, I'll visit you twixt eleven and twelve. Our duty, duty to your honor. Mine to you. Farewell. My father's spirit and armed. All is not well till night. Sit still, my soul. Foul deeds will rise, though all the earth overwhelm them to men's eyes. My necessaries are embarked. Farewell. And sister, do not see, but let me hear from you. Do you doubt that? For Hamlet in the trifling of his favor. He is not permanent, sweet, nor lasting. The perfume of a minute. No more. No more than that? Think it no more. For, for perhaps he loves you now, but you must fear it. His will is not his own. He may not his unvalued persons do for the love whom he wills. But on his choice depends the state and health of this whole nation. And therefore, if he says he loves you, you must fear it, Ophelia. Fear it, my dear sister, and keep you in the rear of your affection after the shot and danger of desire. I shall the effect of this good lesson keep my good brother as watchman to my heart. But, good my brother, do not as some ungracious pastors do, show me the steep and thorny way to heaven, whilst, like a puffed and reckless libertine, himself the primrose path of dalliance treads, and reckons not his own rules. Oh, fear me not. Farewell. I stay too long. Oh, but here my mother comes. Yet here, Laertes! 
A board, a board, for shame. The wind sits in the shoulder of your sail and you are stayed for. There, my blessing with thee. Now these few precepts in your memory see you keep in mind. Give thy thoughts no tongue, nor any unproportioned thought his act. Be familiar, but by no means vulgar. Beware of entrance to a quarrel, but being in, bear it that the opposed may beware of thee. Give every man thy ear, but few thy voice. Take each man's censure, but reserve thy judgment. Neither a borrower nor a lender be, since loan oft loses both itself and friend, and borrowing does the edge of friendship. This above all, to thine own self be true, and it must then follow, as the night the day, you cannot then be false to any man. Farewell, my blessing on you. Uh, my somebody do I take my leave of you, my lady. Farewell, Ophelia. Re remember well the lesson I have said to you. Tis in my memory locked, and you yourself shall keep the key of it. Farewell. What is it, Ophelia, he has said to you? Something touching the Lord Hamlet. Well, I thought so. Tis told me he hath very often of late given private time to you, and you have of your affections been most free and bounteous, the audience too. What is between you? Give me the truth. He has, my lady, of late made many tenders of his affection to me. Affection? Pooh! You speak like a green girl, unsifted in such perilous circumstance. Do you believe his tenders, as you call them? I do not know, my lady, what I should think. I'll teach you. Tender yourself more dearly, and you'll tender me a fool. My lady, he has spoken of his love to me in honorable fashion. I fashion, you may call it, do not believe his vows. I would, in plain terms, from this time forth, not have you talk with Lord Hamlet. Look to it, I charge you. I shall obey, mother. The air bites shrewdly. It is very cold. It is a nipping. And an eager air. What hour now? I think it nearly twelve. No, it is struck. Indeed. I heard it not. Then it draws near the season wherein the spirit walks. What is that, my lord? The king takes his rouse, and as he drains his droughts down, the kettle drum and the trumpet thus bray out his triumph. Is it a custom? More honored in the breach than the observance. This heavy-headed rebel east and west makes other nations call us drunkards. And with swinish phrase, soil our good names. My lord, it comes. Angels and ministers of grace defend us. Be thou a spirit of huff or goblin dam. Bring with the airs from heaven or blasts from hell. King, father, royal day, oh, answer me. Say, what should we do? you to go away with it, as if it did desire to speak to you alone. Look, it waves you to a more removed ground, but do not go with it. No, by no means. If it will not speak, then I will follow it. Do not, my lord. Why, what should be the fear? It waves me forth again. I'll follow it. Well, lord, what if it should tempt you toward the flood or to the summit of the cliff over the sea, and there assume some other horrible form which may deprive you of reason and draw you into madness. Just think of it. It waves me still. 
Go on, I'll follow thee. You shall not go, my lord. Be ruled, you shall not go. Hold off your hands. <laughs> my fate cries out. Unhand me, gentlemen, by heaven. I'll make a ghost of him that holds me. I say, away. Go on, I'll follow thee. Let's follow. Tis not thus fit to obey him. And after him, what will come of it? Oh, something is rotten in the state of Denmark. Heaven will direct it. Nay, let's follow him. Where will you lead me? Speak. I'll go no further. Mark me. I will. My hour is almost come when I to sulfurous and tormenting flames must render up myself. Alas, poor ghost. Pity me not, but lend thy serious hearing to what I shall unfold. Speak, I am bound to hear. So are you to revenge it when you shall hear. What? I am thy father's spirit, doomed for a certain term to walk the night, and for the day confined to fast in fires till the foul crimes done in my days of nature are burnt and purged away. But that I am forbid to tell the secrets of my prison house, I could a tale unfold whose lightest word would harrow up thy soul, freeze thy young blood, make thy two eyes like stars start from their spheres, thy knotted and combined locks depart, and each particular hair to stand on end like quills. But this eternal balloon must not be to ears of flesh and blood. Listen, listen, oh listen, if thou didst ever thy dear father love, revenge is foul and most unnatural murder. Murder? Murder most foul, strange, and unnatural. Hasten me to know it, that I, with wings as swift as thoughts, may swoop to my revenge. Now, Hamlet, here, tis given out that sleeping in my orchard, a serpent stung me. But know, thou noble youth, the serpent that did sting thy father's life now wears his crown. Oh, my prophetic soul, my uncle. I, that incestuous beast with witchcraft of his wit, with traitorous gifts won to his shameful will, my most seeming virtuous queen. O oh, Hamlet, what a falling off there was, but hush. Methinks I sent the morning air. Grief let me be. Sleeping within my orchard, my custom always of the afternoon, upon my secure hour thy uncle stole, and in the porches of my ears did pour his poison. Thus was I sleeping, by a brother's hand, of life, of crown, of queen, at once dispossessed, cut off even in the blossoms of my sin, sent to my account with all my imperfections on my head. Oh, horrible. Oh, horrible. Most horrible. Let not the royal throne of Denmark be a couch for luxury and damned incest, but howsoever thou pursuest this act, taint not thy mind, nor let thy soul contrive against thy mother at all. Leave her to heaven. Farewell, Hamlet. Remember me. <laughs> Remember me. Oh, from the table of my memory, I'll wipe away all trivial fond records, all saws of books, and thy commandment all alone shall live within the book and volume of my brain. O oh, villain, villain, smiling, damned villain. My books, it is right that I set it down, that one may smile and smile and be a villain. So, Uncle, there you are. Now to my word. I have sworn it.
Lord Hamlet! What news, my lord? Touching this vision here, it is an honest ghost. That, let me tell you, for your desire to know it is between us, overmastered as you may. And now, good friends, as you are friends, scholars and soldiers, give me one or request. What is it, my lord? We will. Never make known what you have seen tonight. My lord, we will not. We will not. And therefore, as a stranger, give it welcome. There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. But come, let us go in together and still your fingers on your lips, I pray. The time is out of joint. Oh, cursed spite, that ever I was born to set it right. Give him this money and these notes, Reynalda. I will, my lady. You shall do good, Reynalda, before you visit him to make inquire of his behavior. My lady, I did intend it. Well said, very well said. Look, you miss, inquire and take you as it were some distant knowledge of him, as thus. I know his father and his friends and in part him. Do you mark this, Reynalda? I very well, my lady. And impart him, but you may say, not well, but lay some faults to his name. Look you, none as may dishonor him, take heed of that, but miss such wanton, wild, and usual slips as our companions noted and most known to youth and liberty. As gaming, my lady. I or fencing, drinking, swearing, quarreling, you may go so far. But, my lady, thou would dishonor him. Oh, no, that's not my meaning, but breathe his faults so quaintly that they seem merely the taints of liberty, just the flash and outbreak of a fiery mind. My lady, but... Why should you do this? Aye, huh? my lady. Marry, miss, here's my drift. You laying these slight soles on my son, he closes us. I know the gentleman. I saw him yesterday, or the other day, or then, or then, with such or such. See you now? Your bait of falsehood takes this carp of truth, and thus do we by indirections find directions out. You have me, have you not? My lady, I have. Observe his inclination in yourself. I shall, my lady. Farewell. Oh no, Ophelia, what is the matter? My lady, I have been so affrighted. With what? In the name of God. My lady, as I was sewing in my room, Lord Hamlet came before me, pale as a shirt, and with a look so piteous as if he had been loosed out of hell to speak of horrors. Mad for thy love? My lady, I do not know, but truly I do fear it. What said he? He took me by the wrist and held me hard. Then goes either the length of all my arm, and with his other hand this o'er his brow, he falls to such pursual of my face as he would draw it. Long stayed he so. At last, a little shaking of mine arm, and thrice his head thus waving up and down, he raised a sigh so piteous and profound, as it did seem to shatter all his bulk and end his being. That done, he lets me go, and with his head over his shoulder turned, he seemed to find his way without his eyes, for out of doors he went without their help, and to the last, bended their light on me. Come, go with me. I will go seek the king. This is the very madness of love, whose violence often leads to desperate undertakings. Have you given him any hard words of late? No, my good lady. But as you did command, I did repel his letters and denied his visits. 
that have made him mad. Come, go with me. We will go to the king. This must be known. Welcome, dear Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. The need we have to use, you did provoke our hasty sending. Surely you have heard of Hamlet's transformation. What it could be other than his father's death, I cannot dream of. I entreat you both that, being brought up with him, that you rest here in our court some time. So by your companies, to glean what afflicts him that lies within our remedy. Good gentlewoman, he has much talked of you, and sure I am to women there are not to whom he more adheres. Therefore, if it please you to show us so good will as to spend your time with us a while, for the supply and profit of our hope, your visitation shall receive such thanks as befits a king's remembrance. We both obey and here give ourselves up in the full bent to lay our service freely at your feet to be commanded. Thanks, Lady Rosencrantz and gentle Lady Guildenstern. Thank you, Lady Guildenstern and gentle Lady Rosencrantz. And I beseech you to visit my much changed son. Go, some of you, and bring these women to where Hamlet is. Heavens make our presence pleasant and helpful to him. Aye, amen. The ambassador from Norway, Voldemar, is joyfully returned. Ah, oh, good news. And I do think that I have found the very cause of Hamlet's lunacy. Oh, speak of that. That I long to hear. Give admittance first to the ambassadors. My news shall be the fruit to that great feast. Thyself do grace to them, and bring them in. He tells me, my dear Gertrude, he hath found the source of all your son's distemper. I doubt it is no other but his father's death, and our over-hasty marriage. Well, we shall sift him. Welcome, my good friend. Say, Lady Voldemanda, what's from our brother Norway? Most fair return of greetings and salutations. Upon our first, he sent out to suppress his nephew's Levi's, which, which to him appeared to be a preparation against the Polish lords. When better looked into, they were a he truly found it was against your highness. <clears throat> where it grieved that so his sickness, age, and impotence was falsely borne in hand, sends out arrests on Portenbras, and which he, in brief, obeys. He receives rebuke from Norway and, in fine, makes vows before his uncle to put down their save arms against your highness. Whereon old Norway, overcome with joy, comes with 3,000 crowns in annual fees in his commissions to employ those soldiers so revived as before against the Polish lords, with an entreaty herein for their show, that it might please you to give quiet pass through your dominion for this enterprise on such regards of safety and allowance as therein are set down. It likes us well. We thank you for your well-took labor. Go to your rest. At night we shall feast together. Most welcome home. This business is well ended. My liege and madam, to expostulate why day is day, night is night, and time is time, would be but to waste day, night, and time. Therefore, since brevity is the soul of wit, and tediousness the limbs and outward flourishes, I will be brief. Your noble son is mad. Mad, I call it. For, to define true madness, what is it but to be nothing else but mad? More substance with less art. Madam, I swear I use no art at all. 
That he is mad, tis true. Tis true, tis pity, and pity tis, tis true. I have a daughter, how well she is mine, who in her duty and obedience, Mark, hath given me this note. To the celestial and my soul's idol, the most beautified Ophelia. That's an ill phrase, a vile phrase. Beautified is a vile phrase. Doubt thou the stars are fire. Doubt that the sun does move. Doubt truth to be a liar, but never doubt I love. Oh dear Ophelia, I am ill at these numbers. I have not art to reckon my groans, but that I love thee best, O oh most best. Believe it, adieu. Came this from Hamlet to her? This in obedience hath my daughter shown me, and I overheard much. I went to my daughter then, and bid her lock herself in her room, admit no messengers, and receive no tokens. Hamlet repulsed fell thus into a sadness, thence to a fast, thence to a watch, thence to a weakness, thence to a lightness, and by this declension into the madness wherein now he raves, and all we mourn for. Do you think it is this? It may be. I wish we could prove it otherwise. How may we try it further? You know, sometimes he walks four hours together here in the lobby. So he does indeed. At such a time, I'll loose my daughter to him. Be you and I behind a screen then to mark the encounter. Yes, we will try it. But look, where sadly the poor wretch comes reading. Away, I do beseech you, both away. I'll speak to him. How goes it with my good Lord Hamlet? Well? Do you know me, my lord? Excellent well. You are a fishmonger. Not I, my lord. Then I wish you were so honest a woman. Honest, my lord? I, man, to be honest, as this world goes, is to be one woman picked out of ten thousand. That's very true, my lord. Have you a daughter? I have, my lord. Friend, look to her. How say you by that? Still harping on my daughter. Yet he knew me not at first. He said I was a fishmonger. He is far gone, far gone. I'll speak to him again. What do you read, my lord? Words, words, words. What is the matter, my lord? Between who? I mean, the matter that you read, my lord. Slanders, ma'am. For the satirical rogue says here that old women have gray hair, that their faces are wrinkled, have a plentiful lack of wit. All which, ma'am, though I most powerfully and potently believed, it is of an honesty to have it thus set down. For yourself, ma'am, would be old as I am. If like a crab, you could go backward. Will you walk out of the air, my lord? Into my grave. Indeed, that is out of the air. 
how pregnant sometimes his replies are. I will leave him and suddenly contrive the means of meeting between himself and my daughter. My most honored lord, I will most humbly take my leave of you. You cannot, ma'am, take from me anything that I will more willingly part with, except my life. Except my life. Except my life. Fare you well, my lord. These tedious old fools. You go to seek the Lord Hamlet? There he is. God save you, sir. My honored lord. My most dear lord. My excellent good friends. <laughs> good lasses, how do ye both? As the indifferent children of the earth. Happy, and that we are not over happy. <laughs> What's the news? Would have you, my good friends, deserved at the hands of fortune that she sends you to prison here? Prison, my lord? Denmark's a prison. We think not so, my lord. Why, then it is none to you, for there is nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. To me it is a prison. But in the beaten way of friendship, what make you at Elsinore? To visit you, my lord, no other reason. Beggar that I am, I'm even poor in things. But I thank you, and sure, dear friends. But were you not sent for? Hmm? Is it a free visitation? Come, deal justly with me. Come, speak. What should we say, my lord? Why, anything to the point. You were sent for, and there's a kind of confession in your looks. I know the good king and queen have sent for you. To what end, my lord? That you must teach me. But let me beg you, be honest with me, whether you were sent for or no. If you love me, hold not off. My lord, we were sent for. I will tell you why. So your word to the king and queen be not broken. I have of late lost all my mirth. What a piece of work is a man. How noble in reason. How infinite in the faculty. In form and moving, how admirable. In action, how like an angel. In comprehension, how like a god. The beauty of the world. The paragon of animals. And yet to me, what is this quintessence of dust? Man delights not me. No, not woman either. <laughs> Though by your smiling, you seem to say so. My lord, there is no such stuff in my thoughts. Why did you laugh then when I said, man delights not to me? To think, my lord, what little satisfaction the players shall receive from you. We urge them to come, and here they are to entertain you. <laughs> what players are they? Even those used to take such delight in, the tragedians of the city. There are the players. Gentlewomen, you are welcome to Denmark. But my uncle father and mother are deceived. How, my lord? 
I am but mad north northwest. When the wind is southerly, I know a hawk from a hand's saw. Well, God be with you, gentlemen. Good, my lady. Will you see the players to their quarters? Let them be well cared for. My lord, I will. Come, sirs. Follow her, friends. We'll hear a play tomorrow. Old friend, can you act the play entitled The Murder of Gonzago? Aye, my lord. Good. We'll have it tomorrow night. You could, if needs be, study a speech of some dozen lines which I would write and insert in the play, could you not? I, my lord. Very well. Follow that, lady. I'll leave you till night. You are welcome to Elsinore. Now I am alone. and peasant slave am I. Am I a coward? Who calls me villain? <laughs> Breaks my pate across plucks off my beard and blows in my face, tweaks me by the nose, gives me the lie ear the throat, as deep as to the lungs. Who does me this? Ah! Swoons! I should take it, for it cannot be but I am pigeon limpered and like gall to make oppression bitter. Or in this, I should have batted all the region kites with this slave's awful, bloody body villain. Remorseless, treacherous, lecherous, kindless villain. Oh, vengeance! Why, what an ass am I. This is most brave, and I, the son of a dear father murdered, prompted to my revenge by heaven and hell, must like a whore unpack my heart with words and fall a cursing like a very drab, a scullion, fire upon both. About my brain. I have heard that guilty creatures sitting at a play have by the very cunning of the scene been struck so to the soul that presently they have proclaimed their malefactions. For murder, though it have no tongue, will speak with most miraculous organs. I'll have these players play something like the murder of my father before mine uncle. I'll observe his looks. I'll tent him to the quick. If he but blends, I know my course. The spirit that I have seen may be the devil, 
and the devil hath power to assume a pleasing shape, yea. And perhaps out of my weakness and my melancholy, as he is very potent with such spirits, abuses me to damn me. I'll have crowns more relative than this. The place to think wherein I'll catch the conscience of the king. Why cannot you get from him why he puts on this dangerous lunacy? He does confess he feels himself distracted, but from what cause he will by no means speak. Nor do we find him forward to be sounded, but with a crafty madness keeps aloof when we would bring him on to some confession of his true state. Did he receive you well? Most mannerly. And like a gentleman. Good ladies, try to further probe his fevered mind. We shall, my lord. Sweet Gertrude, leave us too, for we have sent for Hamlet that as by accident he may here confront Ophelia. Her mother and myself will hide that we may frankly judge if it is by love or not that he suffers from. I shall obey you. And for your part, Ophelia, I do hope your virtues will bring him to his true self again, to both your honors. Madam, I wish it may be so. Ophelia? Stand here. Read this book. I hear him coming. Let's withdraw, my lord. Read on this book, she says. That show of such an exercise should color my loneliness. We are to blame in this. Tis too much proved that with devotion's visage and pious action, we do sugar or the devil himself. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against the sea of trouble and by opposing and them. To die, to sleep, no more. And by a sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. Tis a consummation devoutly to be wished. To die, to sleep, to sleep, the chance to dream. I, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off, this mortal coil must give us pause. There's a respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong, 
the proud and contumely, the pangs of despised love, the laws delay, the insolence of office and the spurns, that patient merit of the unworthy takes. When he himself might his quietus make with a bare bodkin, who would foddle spare to grunt and sweat under a weary life? But that the dread of something after death. The undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others that we know not of. Thus, conscience does make cowards of us all. And thus the native hue of resolution is sickly o'er with the pale cast of thought. And enterprises of great pith and moment with this regard their currents turn awry and lose the name of action. Soft you now, the fair Ophelia, nymph in thy orisons be all my sins remembered. Lord Hamlet, how have you been? I humbly thank you. Well, well, well. My lord, I have some tokens of yours that I have longed to return. I pray you now, receive them. No, not I. I never gave you aught. My lord. You know right well you did. Take them again. For to the noble mind, rich gifts grow poor when givers prove unkind. Uh, uh, are you honest? My lord. Are you fair? What means your lordship? I, I did love you once. Indeed, my lord, you made me believe so. You should not have believed me. I loved you not. I was the more deceived. Get thee to a nunnery. I myself have more offenses at my beck and call than I have thoughts to put them in, imagination to give them shape, or time to act them in. Believe none of us. Where's your mother? At home, my lord. Let the doors be shut upon her, that she may play the fool nowhere but in her own house. Farewell. Oh, help him, you sweet heaven! <laughs> Get thee to a nunnery, go! Or, if you must marry, marry a fool. For wise men know well enough what monsters you make of them. Oh, heavenly powers, restore him! Go to, I'll no more on it. I say, we will have no more marriages. Those that are married already. All but one shall live. Go. Oh, what a noble mind is here overthrown. The 
courtiers, scholars, soldiers, eye, tongue, sword, the expectancy and rose of the fair state, the glass of fashion and the mold of form, the observed of all observers, quite, quite down, and I, of ladies most dejected and wretched, that sucked the honey with music vows. Now see, that noble and most sovereign reason, like sweet bells jangled, out to tune and harsh. The unmatched form and feature of blown youth, plastered with ecstasy. Oh, woe is me to have seen what I have seen. See what I see. Love? His affections do not that way tend, nor what he spake. Though it, though it lacked form a little, was not like madness. There's something, something in his soul, o'er which his melancholy sits on brood. I do doubt the hatch and the disclose will be some danger, which for to prevent, I have in quick determination thus set it down. Hamlet shall with speed to England go, for the demand of our neglected tribute, haply the journey shall expel this unsettled manner in his heart, whereon his mind, still turning, puts him thus from fashion of himself. What think you on it? Yet do I believe the origin of his grief has sprung from neglected love. How now, Ophelia? You need not tell us what Lord Hamlet said. We heard it all. My lord, do as you please, but after the play, let his queen mother talk to him alone. I'll be hidden somewhere within earshot of the conference. If she can't straighten him out, send him away, or confine him wherever you think best. It shall be so. Madness and great ones must not unwashed go. Speak the speech, I pray you, as I pronounced it to you, trippingly on the tongue, nor did not saw the air too much with your hand, or split the ears of the groundlings, who for the most part are capable of nothing but inexplicable dumb shows and noise. I will try not to, my lord. And let those that play your clowns speak no more than to sit down for them. For there are those who will themselves laugh to cause some brainless spectators to laugh too, while some essential question of the play is being answered. Go, make you ready. One scene comes near the circumstance of my father's death. When you see that scene, observe my uncle father. Watch him closely, and so will I, and after we will compare our judgments. Very well, my lord. They are coming to the play. I must be idle. Get you in place. How fares our cousin Hamlet? Excellent! Be the players ready! Aye, my lord, they stay upon your patience. Come hither, Hamlet. Sit by me. No, good mother. His metal more attractive. Lord, you are merry. What should a man do but be merry? For, look you, how cheerfully my mother looks. And my father died within these two hours. 
Nay, tis twice two months, my lord. So long, oh heavens, died two months ago and not forgotten yet. Then let us hope that great man's memory may outlive his life half a year. For us and for our tragedy, here stooping to your clemency, we beg your hearing patiently. Is this a prologue or a puzzle? It's brief, my lord. As woman's love. What means this, my lord? Uh, we shall know by this fellow. The players will tell all. Mark the play. Madame, how like you this play? Lady protests too much, methinks. But have you seen it before? Is there no offense in it? No, no. They do but jest. Poison in jest. No offense in the world. What do you call the play? The Mousetrap. This play is the image of a murder done in Vienna. Gonzago is the Duke's name, his wife Baptista. Tis a knavish piece of work, but what of that? We that have free souls, it touches us not. This one is Lucianus, nephew to the king. He poisons him in the garden for his estate. His name's Gonzago. The story is historical and written in Joyce Italian. You shall see soon how the murderer gets the love of Gonzago's wife. The king rises. What? Frightened. Oh, that is my lord. Light. Give, him, give me some light. Away. Light. 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 Oh, good Horatio, I'll take the ghost word for a thousand pounds. Did you perceive it? Very well, my lord. Upon the talk of the poisoning. <laughs> I did very well note him. Come, some music. <laughs> for if the king like not the comedy, why then, perhaps you will like some music. Hamlet, my lord, a word with you. Man. <laughs> a whole history. The king, sir. I, ma'am, what of him? Is, is very distempered. Oh, with drink, ma? No, my lord. Rather, he is unwell. You should tell this to his doctor. My lord, frame your words more evenly and twist not so wildly from my point. I am tame, Madame Promounce. The queen, your mother, in most great affliction of spirit, has sent us to you. You are welcome. If it shall please you to make me a wholesome answer, I will do your mother's commandment. If not, your pardon and my return shall be the end of my business. My mother, you say? Then thus she says, your behavior has struck her into amazement. She desires to speak with you before you go to bed. We shall obey, were she ten times our mother. My lord, I thought you once called me a friend. So I do still. Then what is the cause of your distemper? You bar the door upon your own liberty if you deny your griefs to your own friends. Ooh, the recorders. Let me see one to withdraw with you. Why do you press the issue? 
beating about the bush like hunters trying to get the wind of me. Oh, my lord, if my duty be too bold, my love is too unmannerly. I do not well understand that. Will you play upon this pipe? My lord, I cannot. Please. Believe me, I cannot. I do beseech you. I know no touch of it, my lord. Why, it's as easy as lying. Hmm? Govern the vents with your fingers and thumb. Give it breath with your mouth, and it will discourse most eloquent music. Look, hmm? here, yeah. these are the stars. But these I cannot command to any utterance of harmony. I have not the skill. Why, look you now, how unworthy a thing you make of me. You would play upon me. You would seem to know my stops. You would pluck at the heart of my mystery. You would sound me from my lowest note to the top of my octave. And there is much music, excellent voice in this little pipe. Yet you cannot make it speak. Do you think I am easier to be played on than a pipe? Call me what instrument you will. Though you can fret me, yet you cannot play upon me. My lord, the queen would speak with you presently. Then I will come to my mother by and by. I will say so. It is easily said. Leave me, friends. Now to my mother. Let me be firm, not fatal. I will speak daggers to her, but use none. Now might I do it. Oh, my offense is rank. It smells to heaven. It has the primal eldest curse upon it. A brother's murder. I cannot pray, though, though I desire to. My stronger guilt defeats my strong intention. Is there not rain enough in the sweet heavens to wash my sins white as snow? Then I'll look up. My fault is past. But, but oh, what form of prayer can serve me now? Forgive me my, my foul murder? That cannot be, since I'm, I'm still possessed of those winnings for which I did the murder. My, my crown, my own ambition, and my queen. O wretched state, O tracked soul, black as del death. Help, O angels! Bow you, you stubborn knees and heart. O oh, heart, be soft as the flesh of the newborn babe. All may be well. <laughs> no. Might I do it? Now he is praying. And now I'll do it. And so he goes to heaven. 
And so am I revenged. Hmm? How would that look? A villain killed my father. And for that I, his sole son, to this same villain sends to heaven. Oh, this is not revenge. He took my father with all his crimes, broad, alone, as flush as may. No. Up, sword, await. When he is drunk asleep, or in his rage, or gaming, or swearing, or about some act that has no relish of salvation in it, then trip him that his heels may kick at heaven, and that his soul may be as damned and black as the hell it goes to. My mother waits. My words fly up. My thoughts, however, remain below. Words. Words without thoughts never to heaven shall go. He will come straight. Tell him his pranks have been too broad to bear with, and your grace has stood between much heat and him. I'll silence me even here. Mother. Right here. Mother. Be not for me. Mother. Withdraw. I hear him coming. Mother. Mother. Now, mother, what's the matter? Hamlet, you have your father much offended. Mother, you have my father much offended. Come, come, you answer with an idle tongue. Go, go, you question with a wicked tongue. Have you forgot me? No, by the rude, not so. You are the queen, your husband's brother's wife. And would it were not so, you are my mother. No, I'll set those two that can speak. Come, come, and sit you down, you shall not budge. You go not till I set you up a glass, where you may see the inmost part of you. What, what will you do? You will not murder me! Help! 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 What? Help! Help! How now, a rat? Dead for a ducat! Ah! Dead! Oh. What have you done? I know not. Is it the king? Oh, what rash and bloody deed is this? A bloody deed. Almost as bad, good mother, as kill a king and marry with his brother. As kill a king? Aye, lady, twas my word. Thou oh, wretched, rash, intruding fool. Farewell. I took thee for thy better. Leave wringing of your hands. Peace. Sit you down and let me wring your heart. For so I shall, if damned custom have not braised it against sense. What have I done? Such an act as makes marriage vows as false as dice to those. Look, here, <laughs> upon this picture and on this, the presentment of two brothers. See. What a grace was seated on this brow. This was your husband. 
Look you now what follows. Here is your husband. Have you eyes? What judgment would step from this to this? Oh, shame! Where is your blush? Oh, Hamlet! Speak no more! You turn mine eyes into my very soul, and ere I see such black and green spots. Oh, speak no more! Your words like daggers into mine ears! No more, sweet Hamlet! Oh. A murderer and a villain, and not twentieth part of your precedent lord. A cut purse of the empire that stole the precious diadem and put it in his pocket. A king of shreds and patches. Oh, heavenly guards, save me and hover over me with your wings. What were your griefs? Alas, he's mad. How is it with you, lady? Alas, how is it with you, that you do bend your eye on vacancy, and with the incorporeal lad you hold discourse? For that your eyes, your spirits wildly peeping, like a sleeping soldier in the alarm, your bedded heads do start up and stand on end. Oh, oh gentle sun, upon the heat and flame of thy distemper sprinkle cool patience. Whereon do you look? Do you see nothing there? Nothing at all. Nothing but ourselves. Why, look you there. Look how it steals away. My father, as he lived, Look where he goes, even now. This is the very coinage of your brain. <laughs> My pulse, as yours, temperately keeps time. It is not madness that I have uttered. Mother, for love of grace, confess yourself to heaven. <laughs> Repent what's past, avoid what is to come. Oh, Hamlet, you have cleft my heart in twain. <laughs> Or throw away the worser part of it, and live the pure with the other half. <laughs> Good night. And when you are desirous to be blessed, I'll blessing beg of you. For the same lady, I will answer for the death I gave her. So again, good night. I must be cruel, only to be kind. The spad begins and worse remains behind. There's matter in these sighs. You must translate. Where is your son? Oh, my own lord, what I have seen tonight. What, Gertrude? How does Hamlet? Mad, 
as the wind and sea. Hearing a noise behind the arras, whips out a rapier and cries, A rat, a rat, and kills the unseen good woman. Oh, heavy deed. It might have been so with us had we been there. His liberty is full of threats to all. To you yourself, to us, to everyone. Alas, how shall this bloody deed be answered? Where is he gone? To draw apart the body he hath killed, he weeps for what is done. I fought and all after. Lady Rosencrantz and Lady Guildenstern, go join you with some further aid. Hamilton Madness has slain Lady Polonia, and from his mother's closet has he dragged her. Go seek him out and bring the body into the chapel. I pray you hurry. This bloody deed will be laid on me. Whose providence should have kept short, restrained, and out of haunt this, this mad young man. But, but so much was our love, we did not understand what was most fit to do. Like the owner of some foul disease, to, to keep the secret of it, let it feed and grow. Find him out. Find him out and ship him hence. I, I've sent to seek him and, and to find the body. How dangerous is it that this man goes loose, though? Yet must not we put the strong law on him? He's loved from the distracted multitude. To countenance and excuse this vile deed, it will take all of my skill. If I, if I loved Polonius, nay, if I loved myself, it will teach me imagination. How now? What has happened? Where the dead body is stowed, my lord, we cannot get from him. But where is Hamlet? Outside, my lord, guarded to know your pleasure. Bring him before me. Guildenstern, bring in Lord Hamlet. Now, Hamlet, where is Lady Polonia? At supper. At supper? Where? Not where she eats, but where she is eaten. A certain convocation of partic worms are even at her. A worm is the only emperor for diet. A man may fish with the worm that is eaten of a king, and may eat of the fish that is fed of that worm. Hamlet, where is Lady Polonia? In heaven, if not there, seek her in the other place yourself. But indeed, if you find her not within <clears throat> this month, you shall notice her as you go up the stairs into the lobby. Lady Rosencrantz and Lady Guildenstern, go seek her there. Oh, she will stay till you come. Hamlet. This deed, for thine especial safety, which we do tender as we dearly grieve, for that which thou hast done, must send thee thence with fiery quickness. Therefore prepare thyself. The bark is ready, and the wind at help. The associates tend, and everything is bent for England. For England. Aye, Hamlet. Farewell, dear mother.
thy loving father, Hamnet. My mother. Father and mother is man and wife. Man and wife is one flesh. And so, my mother. Come for England. O oh, England, if my love thou holds that aught, thou mayst not coldly set our sovereign process, which in ports at full by letters congruing to that effect, the present death of Hamlet. Do it, England. Do it. For like the hectic in my blood, he rages, and thou must cure me. Till I know tis done, however he haps, my joys were never begun. green turf, at her heels a stone. They bore her bare face on the bier. Hey, nonny, nonny, hey, nonny. And in her face, they many a tear. Fare you well, my dove. And will she not come again? And will she not come again? No, no. She is dead. Get thee to thy deathbed. I hope all will be well. I must be patient. But I cannot choose my way. To think they shall lay her in the cold ground. My brother shall hear of this. So I thank you for your good counsel. Good night, good night, ladies. Good night, sweet, sweet ladies. Good night. <laughs> this deep grief springs from her father's death. Oh, Gertrude, Gertrude, when sorrows come. They come not singly, but in battalions. First, her mother slain. Fortinbras grows with ambitions puffed. The people, thick and unwholesome in their thoughts and whispers, for good Pol Polonia's death. Last, Laertes, her brother, has returned in secret and learns in wonder of his dear mother's death. Where are my men? Let them guard the door. What is the matter? My lord, young Laertes, in a riotous mood, has gotten past the guards. The doors are broke. <laughs> Thou vile king, give me my mother. Calmly, good, good Laertes. What is the cause, Laertes, that thy rebellion looks so giant-like? Let him go, Gertrude. Do not, do not fear our person. Tell me, Laertes, why are you thus incensed? Where is my mother? She is dead. But not by him. Let him demand his fill. Who him she dead? I will not be juggled with. To hell allegiance, I will done damage. Come what comes, I will be revenged. Who shall stop you? Not all the world. That is good, Laertes. If you desire to know the certainty of your father's death, is it written in revenge that you will draw both friend and foe? None but his enemies. To his friends, I will open wide my eyes. Why, now you speak as a true gentleman. I am guiltless of your mother's death. What? 
Noise is not. Oh. Oh. Tears. Levantine soul. Burn up and soak from my eyes. Oh, Rose of May. Oh, sweet maid. Sister Ophelia. Oh, heavens. Is it possible that a young girl's wits are as mortal as an old man's life? There's rosemary. That's for remembrance. Pray, love, remember. There's pansies. That's for thoughts. There's fennel for you and columbines. There's rose. And some for me. They call it herb grace on Sundays. Oh, you must wear your rue with a difference. There's a daisy. I would give you some violets, but they wear it all when my mother died. They say she made a good end. Laertes, I must commune with your grief, or you deny me right. Where the guilt is, let the axe fall, go but to part. Be you content to lend your patience to us, and we shall, we shall jointly labor with your soul to give it due content. You have heard, and with a knowing ear that he which hath your noble mother slain, pursued my life too. It well appears. But tell me, why did you not proceed against these things, so crimeful and so capital in nature? For your safety, wisdom, and all things else were stirred up in it. For two special reasons. A queen, his mother, lives almost by his looks. And for myself, she's so conjunctive to my life and soul, I could not act but by her word. The other public motive why is that the great love the people bear him who did all his faults in their affection. <laughs> And so, have I a noble mother lost? A sister, driven into desperation. But, but my revenge will come. It will. You shortly shall hear more. I loved your mother, and we love ourselves, and that I hope will teach you to imagine. Laertes, will you be ruled by me? I, my lord. So you will not outrule me to a peace. To thine own peace, I will work him to an exploit, now ripe in my device under which he shall fall. And for his death, no wind of blame shall breathe, and even his mother shall call it an accident. My lord, my lord, I will be ruled, ruled the better, if you could devise it, so that I might be the instrument of his death. It falls right. You have been talked of, and that, in Hamlet's hearing, for a quality wherein they say, 
you shine. What is that, my lord? Why, the masterly report of your swordsmanship. Hamlet is so envenomed with envy that he would wish nothing but to fence with you. Aye, my lord. Laertes, was your mother dear to you? Why you ask this? Not that I think that you did not love your mother, but that I know love is begun by time, and time qualifies the spark and fire of it. And so, what we would do, we should do when we would. That would you undertake to show yourself, your mother's son, indeed. I will cut his throat in church. Revenge should have no bounds. But, good Laertes, will you do this? Keep close within your chamber. Hamlet shall know you are come home. We will praise your excellence and put a wager on the duel. He, being remiss, will not examine the swords, so that, with ease, or with a little shuffling, you may choose an edge the sword and requit him for your mother. I will do it. Yes, I will. Uh, and for that purpose, I will anoint my sword. I have a poison so mortal that but touch a knife in it. Nothing can save the thing once but scratched with it from death. Let's further think of this. If well, we should have a second plan that might hold. Yes. We'll make a solemn wager on your cunnings. Oh, I have it. When you are hot and dry and he calls for drink, I'll have prepared him a chalice. Whereon but sipping, if he by chance escape your venom, a purpose may hold there. Let one mold us tread upon another's heel. Laertes, your sister is drowned. Drowned. Drowned! Where? There is a willow grows a slanter brook. It shows its hoar leaves in the glassy stream. There with fantastic garlands did she come, of crow flowers, nettles, daisies, and long purples, that liberal shepherds give a grosser name. But our cold maids do dead men's fingers call them. There on pendant boughs her coordinate weeds clamoring to hang, an envious liver broke, and down her weeded trophies in herself fell into the weeping brook. Clothes spread wide and mummied like a, a while they bore her up, at which time she chanted snatches of old tunes as one incapable of her own distress. Or as a creature native, <laughs> and endued into that element. But long it could not be. <laughs> the clothes heavy with their drink, pulled that poor wretch from her melodious lay, unto her muddy death. <laughs> Do you see this, oh God? <laughs> Too much water. As poor Ophelia. And therefore, I will forbid my tears. Gertrude, let's follow. How much I had to do to calm his rage. Now fear I this will give it start again. Therefore, let's follow. Is she to be buried in proper burial that willfully seeks her own salvation? I tell thee she is, and therefore make her grave straight. 
how can that be unless she drowned herself in her own defense? Why, it is bound to be exactly that. It must be, for here lies the point. If I drown myself wittingly, it argues an act. An act has three branches, that is, to act, to do, and to perform. So, she drowned herself wittingly. Nay, but here you, good man, Delver. Your patience. Here lies the water. Good. Here stands the man. Good. If the man go to the water and drown himself, willy-nilly, he goes wittingly. Mark you that. But if the water come to the man and drown him, he drowns not himself. So he that is not guilty of his own death shortens not his own life. But is this law? The truth of the matter is, if this had been a gentlewoman, she would have been buried elsewhere. Why, there you said it, and the more pity that great folk should have in this world to drown or hang themselves more than their common man. Come, my spade. There is no ancient gentleman but gardeners, ditchers, and grave makers. I'll put another question to thee. If you answer not to the purpose, confess thyself. Go to. What is he that builds stronger than the mason, the shipwright, or the carpenter? The gallows maker, for that Fremont lives a thousand tenants. <laughs> I like that much well. In good faith, the gallows does well. But how does it well? It does well to do those that do ill. Now you do ill to save the gallows, and so the gallows may do well to thee. Do it again, come. Who builds stronger than a mason, a shipwright, or a carpenter? I tell me that in a yoke. Oh, now I can tell. <laughs> do it. Oh, I cannot tell. Cuddle thy brains no more about it, for your dull ass will not mend his pace with beating. And when you are asked this question next, say a grave maker. The houses that he makes last till doomsday. Now, fetch me a stupid liquor. In youth, when I did love, did love, did love, methought it was very sweet to pass the time with you, my love, and the hours were, were all of them fleet. Does this lady know feeling for her business as she sings at great thinking? Custom. But age, old age, with stealing steps, hath clawed me in its clutch. And he so shipped me down the land, I wish I had never been such. That skull had a tongue in it, and could sing once. Might have, my lord. A pickaxe and a spade, a spade, a spade, for, and a shrouding sheet. A oh, pit of clay for to be made, for such a guest is meet. I will speak to this lady. Whose grave is this? Mine, sir. I think it is yours indeed, for you lie in it. I li you lie out of it, sir, and therefore it is not yours. For my part, I do not lie in it, and yet it is mine. Your dust lie in it is for the dead, not for the living. Therefore you lie. What man do you dig it for? For no man, sir. What woman, then? For none, neither. Who is to be buried in it? One that was a woman, sir, but rest her soul, she's dead. How absolute the knave is. <laughs> we must be correctly or equivocation will undo us. How long have you been a grave maker? I came to it that day that our last King Hamlet overcame Fortinbras. How long is that since? Cannot you tell that? Every fool can tell that. It was the very day that young Hamlet was born. He that is mad. How came he mad? Very strangely, they say. How strangely? By losing his wits. How long will a man lie ere the earth, ere he rot? Here's a skull now. This skull hath lain in the earth three and twenty years. Whose was it? It is the king's jester. Let me see. Uh, 
Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio. A fellow of infinite jest of most excellent fancy. He hath borne me on his back a thousand times. And now, how poured in my imagination it is. My gorge rises at it. Here hung those lips that I have kissed, I know not how oft. Where be your jibes now? Your gambles, your songs, your flashes of merriment that were wont to set the table on a roar. Not one now to mock your own grinning. Quite chap fallen. Now get you to my lady's chamber and tell her, let her paint an inch thick. To this favor she must come. Make her laugh at that. To what base uses we may return, Horatio. Why may not imagination trace the noble dust of Alexander till we find it stopping a barrel hole? Were too curious to consider so, my lord. Imperious Caesar, dead and turned to clay, might stop the hole to keep the wind away. Oh, that that earth which kept the world in all should patch a wall to expel the winter flaw. But soft, but soft, aside, here comes the king. Can there be no more done? Lay her in the earth, and from her fair and unpolluted flesh, they find it spring. A uh, ministering angel shall my aid, shall my sister be. Shall she be when Hamlet lies howling? What? The fair Ophelia? Farewell. I hope thou should be my Hamlet's wife. I thought thy bride bed to have bedecked, and not to have strewed thy grave. O oh, treble woe! Fall ten times on that cursed head, whose wicked deed deprived thee of most ingenious sense, deprived thee of. What is he whose grief bears such an emphasis? The devil take thy soul! Pluck them asunder! Um, it. Gentlemen, good my lord, be quiet. Come at me. Why, I will fight with him upon his grave. I loved Ophelia! Forty thousand brothers could not, with all their quantity of love, make up my sum. What wilt thou do for her? Oh, good Laertes, he is mad. The love of God, forbear him! What would you do? Would you weep? Would you fight? Would you eat the crocodile? I'll do it. Did you come here to whine? I'll rant as well as you. I loved you ever, but it is no matter. Let anyone at all do what he may. The cat will mew, and the dog will have his day. I pray you, good Horatio, wait upon him. Strengthen your patience in our last night's speech. We'll put the matter to the present push. An hour of quiet, shortly shall we see. 
Till then, in patience, our proceedings be. My Lord Hamlet, uh, I, ha I have a message from His Majesty. Have you indeed? Sir, uh, a, a young man named Laertes. What of him? No doubt you are acquainted with his fame as a swordsman. I have heard of it. The king has said, my lord, that you are the better swordsman than this Laertes, and has laid a great wager upon his head. Has he indeed? Indeed he has, my lord. He has best Laertes, that in a dozen passes, he shall not exceed you three hits. What's his weapon? Sword and dagger. That's two weapons, but just as well. The, the king hath, wa hath wagered six Barbary horses against six French swords. Sir, if he please his majesty, let the swords be brought. I will win for him if I can. Your lordship? You will lose the wager, my lord. I think not. I have been in constant practice and I shall win. But I am ill here about my heart, about the death of his mother. My lord, I'll tell them you're not fit for this match. Not a wit. We defy augury. There's a special providence in the fall of a sparrow. If it be now, tis not to come. If it be not to come, it will be now. If it be not now, yet it will come. The readiness is all. Since no man knows aught of what he reads, what is to read betimes? Let be. Come, Hamlet, come and take Laertes's hand from me. Give me your pardon, sir. I've done you wrong. But pardon it as you are a gentleman, what I have done. I here proclaim was madness. Was it Hamlet wronged Laertes? Never Hamlet. It was Hamlet's madness. Sir, forgive me. I am satisfied. I do receive your offer of friendship. And you will not wrong it. I embrace it freely and will my uncle's wager frankly play. Give us the blades. Come, one for me. Give them the blades, Osric. Hamlet, know you the wager? Very well, my lord. Your grace has laid the odds on the weaker side. I do not fear it. I have seen you both. This one is too heavy. Let me see another. This likes me well. Are these swords all of the same length? Uh, aye, my lord. Set me the stoops of wine upon the table. If Hamlet give the first or second hit, or quit an answer of the third exchange, let all the battlements their ordinance fire. The king shall drink to Hamlet's better health, and in the cup a pearl shall he throw, richer than that which four successive kings in Denmark's crown have worn. And let the kettle to the trumpet speak, the trumpets to the cannoneer without, the cannons to the heavens, the heavens to the earth. Now, the king drinks the hamlet. 
Come, begin. And you, the judges, bear a wary eye. A uh, 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 hit, a uh, yeah. hit, very palpable hit. Stay, give me a drink. Hamlet, this pearl is thine. Here's to thy health. I'll play this bout first. Set it by a while. Come. Another hit? What yeah. say you? No, a judge. A judge. You confess? <laughs> Our son shall win. Ah. Here, Hamlet, let me wipe thy brow. The queen toasts to your fortune. No, Gertrude, do not drink. My lord, I will. I pray you pardon me. Come, my lord, I will hit you now. Yet, it is almost against my conscience. Come for the third, Laertes. You but dally. I pray you. Do your best. I have you now. Come at me. Hearts then, they are incensed. Nay, come again. Oh, uh, look you to the queen there. How is it with you, my lord Hamlet? Uh, how is it with you, Laertes? Why? Most right. I'm justly killed with my own treachery. How is the queen? She swoons to see you hurt. No! No! The drink! The drink! Who had it? The drink! I... Oh, villainy. Let the doors be locked! Treachery. I'll seek you out. Oh, Hamlet. I am he. Hamlet. Thou art slain. The instrument in your hand. No medicine in the world could do thee good now. <coughs> and by that instrument, you are killed. So here I die. Never to rise again. Thy mother is poisoned. I can say no more. The king! The king is the blade! The point poisons too. Then poison to thy work. Oh, friends, def defend me. I am I am but hurt. <coughs> Thou villain, drink this potion. 
follow my mother. He is justly served. No. Forgiveness. Forgiveness with me. Oh, oh noble Hamlet. I am dying, Horatio. Poor mother, goodbye. Horatio, I am dying. Thou livest. Tell them what I did was right. I'll die with thee. Give me the cup! If thou didst ever hold me in thy heart, absent thee from felicity a while, And in this harsh world, draw thy breath in pain to tell my story. No, oh. I die for a show. The potent potion quite o'ercrows my spirit. The rest is silence. No oh, cracks a noble heart. Good night, sweet prince. Flights of angels sing thee to thy rest. What is this site? What is it you would see? Thought of woe or wonder. Cease your search. This quarry cries on havoc. O oh, proud death, what feast is toward in thine eternal cell? That thou so many princes at a shot so bloodily hast struck. This sight is dismal, and our affairs come too late. The ears are senseless that should give us hearing. To tell them their commandment is fulfilled, where should we have our thanks? Not from his mouth. Had it the ability of life to thank you. He never gave commandment for their death. But since upon this bloody question you from our here arrived, Give order that these bodies high in the stage be placed to the view, and let me speak to the yet unknowing world how these things came about. So shall you hear carnal, bloody, the natural acts of accidental judgments, casual slaughters, of deaths put on by cunning and forced cause, and in the subshot, purposes mistook. Fallen in on the inventor's heads. All this can I truly deliver. Let us haste to hear it and call the noblest to the audience. For me, with sorrow, I embrace my fortune. Let four captains bear Hamlet like a soldier to the stage, for he was likely, had he been put on, to approve most royally. Take up the bodies. Such a sight as this becomes the field, but here shows much amiss. Thank you so much for watching our senior play, Hamlet. And on behalf of the class of 2020, I'd like to thank 
Mrs. Podzerwinski for working so hard with this class, our drama director, and also Mr. Christopher Lyon for helping her out, help us. Thank you so much. We would also like to thank Ms. Harado and Ms. Maureen Severance for editing this wonderful play, and especially Mrs. Sullivan for these beautiful costumes that she provided for us. Thank you so much.